there are two annotations that people who are learning Spring and Spring Boot absolutely love. It's the component and the component scan annotations. You see, when you're working with the Spring framework, well, Spring is an inversion of control container, which means Spring will manage the life cycle and the configuration of Java beans for you. Now, here's the thing. Spring won't manage every single Java component on your class path. You have to tell Spring which components to manage. Now, as you can see, I've got some code here that I've been working through on this example where I'm working towards building a, a rock, paper, scissors game in Spring and Spring Boot. And I've created the application context, the Spring IOC container. And when I do that, I tell Spring, manage the game class and manage the score class, right? I pass those classes right into the constructor for the annotation config application context. That's fine for the first couple of examples, but as you can imagine, you know, if you have hundreds of classes, <laughs> that um, runs out of steam quickly. You don't want to keep adding and then removing classes as they're deleted. So there's a better way. One way to let Spring know about the various classes that you want it to manage is to add an at component annotation to all of the Java beans that you believe should be eligible for Spring and version of control container management. Okay. Um, there, you have to combine this with a component scan, so just adding those annotations on won't automatically tell Spring to manage those beans for you. So I don't want to say that allows Spring to manage the beans. It has to be in combination with a component scan annotation that we're going to add in just a moment. Now, do you see those red X's there? Well, they're not red X's. They're actually white X's on a red background. Um, but if you see those there, there's, that's just because I haven't organized my imports. I'll do a control shift O and control S and boom, all of a sudden those errors go away. Now, the component annotation says that I believe that these classes, the game and the score, should be eligible for Spring IOC container management. I want the Spring container to manage them. But the Spring container won't manage them unless those classes are subject to what we call a component scanning by the Spring framework. So how do we trigger a component scan? Well, first of all, you have to put the at component scan annotation on one of your classes, control shift O to organize the import. So now I've put this component scan annotation on the Spring framework. The component scan says if this class, the Spring Framework class here, is managed by the IOC container, fed into the IOC container, um, well, what we should do is we should scan for classes in this class's package and any of its sub packages for classes that have the component annotation on them. So these all work together. I'm not done yet, though. Um, first of all, I've said that, you know, um, I'm going to use the component annotation to let Spring know that those classes should be managed by the IOC container. So I don't need to pass the name of those classes into the constructor when I create the application context. The application context is a Spring container. Now, at the same time, I did say that in order for that component scan to run, the class with that component scan annotation has to be managed by the Spring container. The way you do that is by going over here and saying that class, the Spring Framework class, that's a class right there, should get managed by the Spring Framework. So now what's happening is I'm creating the application context, the Spring IOC container. When I create the Spring IOC container, the only class I'm loading in is the Spring Framework class. So I'm saying manage the Spring Framework class, but that Spring Framework class has this component scan annotation. So when this code runs, when that gets loaded, the Spring Framework says, I'm going to go searching in the same package of this class and any sub package for a class with a component annotation on it, and then I'm going to manage those as well. So in theory, if I run this code now, well, the Spring Framework is going to load in the score and the game class because they uh, do have that component annotation on them. It's going to do the auto wiring for the score uh, into the, the property of the game class, do the dependency injection, and then my code should run. 
right? So when I get the game from the Spring IOC container, I should get a game class, an instance that has the score initialized. I should be able to call that play the game method, which will increase the score by one each time and then print that out and get the number two. So a little control S to save everything, run as a Java application, the code runs, and then boom, all of a sudden we get the number two in there. So that all looks good. Everything's running swimmingly. So there you go. That's how the spring component scan and component annotations work together. Now I will say one thing about this. One of the goals of the spring inversion of control container is to advocate and promote loose coupling between components. That could be loose coupling between layers in your architecture, the data layer, the model layer, the view layer. It could mean loose coupling between your code and external libraries that you use. It could even mean loose coupling between interfaces and their implementations. All of that stuff is reasons for using the Spring Framework. But of course, you know, one of the ideas of inversion of control is that your business logic, your business components um, aren't tied to any framework, that they are just pure POJOs, plain old Java object, pure business components. And if we put this component annotation on the score class, if we put this component annotation on the game class, well, we are now binding those two classes to the spring framework. The same goes for that auto wired annotation as well. So for example, if maybe I wanted to use these classes scoring game as data transfer objects and pass them to my data layer. Well, the data layer would need a reference to, to these. And if it has a reference to these, it's also going to have to have a reference to the whole spring framework, right? Because in order for the data layer to be able to compile the score in the game class, it has to be able to support those component annotations, which means including the spring framework. Same for my view layer. Maybe I've got a simple JSF view layer and I want to share one of these components with it. Well, if I package this as a, a common jar file, I'm going to have to package in the spring framework. So, that is not a good thing, right? Tying your POJOs, your Java beans, your business logic tightly to a framework by having a spring specific annotation in here. It's perfect for learning. It's perfect for getting started. However, um, as your applications grow, um, there's two ways you can avoid this. One is by creating a configuration class. And so you leave your POJOs, your Java objects, just as pure objects. And then you put the configuration in a Java class that has all of the configuration inside of it. So the configuration class goes with your, your middle tier, with your, your spring uh, IOC container, but it leaves uh, your reusable components alone. And another option is using the um, often disliked spring XML file. Um, but you can put all your configuration in a Spring XML file and take the component auto wired annotations completely off your code as well. So those are two other options that I recommend for larger applications that uh, are going to have hundreds and hundreds of classes in them using XML and um, uh, Spring configuration is a better solution. But for learning, for getting things started, for seeing how these things work together. Springs component and component scan annotations are just fine to use. Now, by the way, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. Got lots of great tutorials on Spring, Spring Boot, Dependency, Injection, JPA, Hibernate, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. I do have a couple of books behind me, including Hibernate Made Easy, uh, Pickering is Springfield, and What is WebSphere? And of course, there's Darcy to include Scrum Master Certification Guide to help with some final edits on there. So if you want to score 100% on the Scrum Master Certification exam, it's a pretty darn good place to start. Anyways, finally, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would just say, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?